Sabah, sorry, Sabah. No worries, you didn't know. <laughs> um, so I'm based in Oakland, the Bay Area, and um, I do plan on having some connections. Hello. <laughs> I do plan on Susie having- and I you're are talk, You're talking to two Bay Area girls right here. Sure to be and I. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I do plan on having some connections with um, East Coast folks in the future. That would be ideal. I think that makes sense. But I think when I'm, I'm hearing this, like, um, I constantly hear this discussion around strategy when, you know, theater runs, distribution runs, and festival runs. And um, I'm, I, I feel like I'm at a bit of a dilemma uh, with budgeting and kind of like um, dividing up uh, funds um, in the best way possible when thinking about strategizing um, in, in those three areas. So what are, um, I guess, what are some like, I guess the top three roles that I would focus on that you advise that I focus on um, while I'm strategizing with my team? Sure. I mean, I'll jump in and answer some of this, but everyone else, I mean, I, I think some of us may have similar perspectives or different ones. I'm going to start back with something Gabriella said, and, and with who, what are your goals? Who is your audience? What are you going for? Um, you know, I've worked with filmmakers who are like, I want to do a really long festival run because that, because, you know, it's important. I'm going to get selected. I can get those, the leaves as a selection. I can get awards from it. That'll help me if I'm going to go out fundraise. Um, you know, obviously if you get into a Sundance, you get that, you know, it already gives you something for, for funding down the road. Right. Um, most filmmakers who choose to do theatricals that I'm familiar with, I would say most are trying to qualify for the Oscars. You know, that's really why you would do a theatrical run. Um, it's such a small market, you know, I mean, it's such a, it's a small audience and they're trying to go New York where do you do New York and LA, I think, or wherever the qualifying is. Um, so I really think it depends on what your goals are. I mean, you know, there are programs that you might go, I really want to have robust engagement. And I want to work with someone where we can do screenings. Maybe, maybe my local station will host a screening of the program and, and, and have a forum to talk about the issue. And that's really important for me, you know, to be engaged in conversations. I, I will say, I think when people talk about a Netflix or um, a, a cable network or another broadcaster, one of the things that public media does that I don't think anyone else does at our scale is local engagement. And even when you get on a PBS series nationally, some of those series like an independent lens, a POV, they do local engagement. Some films get selected and will have local screenings throughout the country through their PBS stations, through the local libraries. And that is something that's really unique and a value of public television that I don't think anyone else can bring at the level that yeah, we do. The only do. thing I was gonna um, add to Shri so I mean, um statement is that there are a lot of stations who just don't have any money. so. It's, it's like, you know, a, a, a huge challenge. They don't even have, they really don't have any money. So, but there are, there are a lot of things that a lot of stations can do for you that still cost them some money, but it's easy to sneak it in. And by that, I would say, you know, one of my, like New Jersey, if you submitted to New Jersey, there's a huge difference between submitting to New Jersey and, and 13. 13 has a budget. New Jersey doesn't really have a budget, but what do they have? They're lower costs in, you know, it's very easy for me to get something captioned that, that would be of national quality. So you would give it to me, I would caption it for you, give it back to you. And then now you have a broadcast that has pa passed all the tech specs and not everything else that you can now sell and offer and do whatever you need. And you might not have had that. Or maybe you haven't finished the film. You still have to put the credit beds. You got to do this. You got to do that. Or you need to edit it. There's maybe... Uh, flaggable material, cuss words, something like that, that you totally tapped out. You don't have the money to do any of the audio or visual edits. Well, we can take care of that for you. And then the other thing is that we can also, and, and I'm, I'm not kidding, we all know each other. It's very easy for me to then tell you, if you want, I know about five other stations that might be interested in it and they, they probably have a budget. So then I can help you do like the original regional distribution and you don't have to deliver to them because since I have it, I can just give it to them that they would pay you to ha you know, have access and stuff like that. So there's all these different relationships that can be done. There can also be the, obviously the screening. Um, the WNET does a lot of things in the education field. So maybe they'll want to write um, lesson plans. And you know, I don't, I mean, filmmakers generally don't know how to do, you know, that's not their bailiwick, that's not in their wheelhouse. So, 
having an expert that can do that and and it's not hard for them to do but it would be hard for someone else to go figure out there's anyway there's a lot of in-house things that they can provide that'll amplify and then you walk away and you have like extra stuff that you didn't have absolutely you want a station to produce a promo for you which costs in some places there's there if they're um a union shop that could be thousands and thousands of dollars for a promo to be made which is what 13 costs it costs a lot of money but they will do it if i tell them to and then you'll have a promo a generic promo that you could use for other places that you're going so um and then you also can't deny the social media advertisement too which doesn't cost the station anything but it's a huge lift for for, for visibility is that that's I'm finding personalities. <laughs> I think I've spoken to Mr. <laughs> Debbie about my daughter is a personality that might be of interest because she's a STEM advocate um, and she's 15. I have a, um, a, pale a black paleontologist that also would be great in the educational sector. And somebody recently came to me to help produce a YouTube series. She is a black queer woman in Oregon going after a national championship in horseback riding. She is like a unicorn. And so um, we're just beginning, but after listening to this conversation, I'm realizing that some of these things may be of interest to you. Um, and I'm thinking of Gabriella specifically for the World Channel for the Horseback Riding Women. They're short, they're intended for YouTube. I'm really early on in helping her build kind of her program is there an opportunity to talk to you to see if there's even interest? Um, and I understand that you guys might be buried in submissions and stuff. So how do we communicate when we have something so early on? Is it worth communicating? Um, so just trying to kind of feel, how can I be that person that can bring what you're looking for to you? One of the things that's so hard about um, knowing when to go pitch it is when they go pitch it and i think it's all really up to you okay when are you ready um what's good about public media is i think people will have a conversation with you mm -hmm. um and it's just a matter of making sure that you're knocking on the door and, and don't give up but i also think there are some funding opportunities for something like that that you should know about so i don't know if we talked about itvs mm -hmm. in this conversation and did the um the digital open call that they do every year like i don't know how many projects they find i don't like i don't really get into it but i do think as you're in development on projects there are opportunities for funding from organizations like itbs and pov and stations um but i do think when you do have opportunities like this you're you know i've shared my email with you and I'm sure others will too. And I mean, I think start by just sharing it okay. when you're ready. And then if we get a minute, we'll take a look and give you some feedback on it, but could probably also point you in directions where you might be able to get some funding support to keep, move it along. I just, I just love you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You Thanks, know, this everyone. makes me Thanks, so Sif. happy. Thank you, Sif, and thank welcome. you, Independence Public Media. Yes, yeah, and thank, thank you so you much, Noella. for Thank you, thank you from IPMF, and thank you to Molly and all the staff there. They've been wonderful. Thank you, the SIF members. Shout out to SIF members in the house, Yolanda, Tatiana, Shamika. Uh, I think Lois was there. Who did I miss? Of course, there's Nikki Harmon, and who else is there from SIF Media 215? Shout out to y'all. Uh, thank you so much. And to Benjamin. Benjamin, is that Benjamin in the back? <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. And take care, and we look to hear from you soon. And Destiny, Destiny's in the house. There's Destiny. Yes, yes, she's a member as well. Okay, thank you so much.